feel like if I turn around, the slides will magically be there. Huh, no, okay. Ah, there we go. We have slides. Cool. All right. So uh, after that fantastic um, talk, we're now going to listen to Mia from Bitstamp, who's going to give a, a talk on the building blocks of crypto, like DeFi Legos. <laughs> Take it away, Mia. Thanks. Thanks, Ricardo. Okay, let me let me just try a few things first. All right. Okay, here we go. Um, so, hey everyone, I'm Mika and I work for Bitstamp. And today I'm gonna talk about the building blocks of crypto. Um, at least that was the best title I could come up with. So, excuse me if it sounds stupid from the get-go. So. What I want to, uh, to talk about is how this industry evolved and how it's made up and built, just like Lego blocks, to this amazing uh, chaos of an industry it is today. So in the beginning, just like in every cult, there is a genesis. And for us, that's Bitcoin. And in the beginning, there was Bitcoin. But actually, there was also fraud, scams, money laundering, bribery, tax evasion, defaults, bankruptcies, bubbles, hacks, fuck-ups, wash trading, spoofing, manipulations, and drugs. But I'm still not talking about crypto. I'm talking about the compliance departments in some of the, the big institutions that were supposed to be taking care of this stuff. But they said, I guess it's okay, because it's still running through our pipes. And now a new slide is supposed to show up, and here it is. So all that stuff was okay because it was running through the traditional banking system. And of course, you would say, that system is really corrupt, and something needed to be done. And something was done. So when Bitcoin launched, it changed the world forever. Of course, this is something that all of us keep saying since to 2009, 2010, or whenever everyone just joined. But there does not change the simple fact that Bitcoin is the first time in the history of mankind that money became decentralized, censorship resistant, and detached from any central point of authority. And I know this sounds a bit old and preaching to the choir, but actually, if you really think about it, as far back as history takes us and is recorded, money was always controlled by the very few who had the mon monopoly over the forces of oppression. In other terms, uh, they were the only ones authorized to do the ass whipping if something was not like they imagined the world to, to operate. So, of course, it would be unjust to the great societies we live in to just say, yeah, you know, it's just the pharaoh giving his annual ass whipping to everyone year after year for a few millennia. Of course, that doesn't work. So what they all did was sugarcoat the entire ass-whipping part and built and sugarcoated it with laws, institutions, and that just prob solved the problem for centuries, for millennia, until Bitcoin came along. And now the whole legend was born, right? So some joined for the tech, some joined for the money, some joined... Uh, so they no longer had to deal the dealer in the street that they were always kind of afraid of. And some of them were just like gambling on newly established businesses such as Mt. Gox, Bitstamp, and Trade Hill, and Bitcoin, and just about everything else at the time. And the hype was very, very real. And whoever saw or was around the time when Bitcoin hit $10 or $100 was probably as ecstatic as, you know, the, the, the coming, you know, the whole world just changed. But just like all the bubbles in the history of the financial system, even Bitcoin was not uh, was susceptible to the laws of gravity. So that's what all happened. What happened and what and what um, followed next is pretty much um, a well-known story, but I would just um, characterize it with two words. One was depression, and the other one's Ethereum. And if you think of that, 2020 is a really bad year. 
you should think crypto 2014 to 16 because that was an absolute shit show. And if there is one meme that could capture it all, it's probably this one. Okay. The bit, my Bitcoin is down 90%, but hey, at least my exchange didn't get hacked. Bad luck, Brian. But unfortunately, or fortunately, it wasn't just doom and gloom, because at that point in time, the first, for the first time, the genie was clearly out of the bottle. And what it showed is that decentralized money protocols, and that something like this could actually work, the application, the money itself on a protocol is the application, and this was Bitcoin. But then smart people also started thinking about smart contract and building stuff on top of these decentralized protocols, which unlocks the whole new, um, you know, field of possibilities of when uh, you think of applications starting to run on these protocols. And that's where I think this big shift from just like, Bitcoin and a bunch of shit coins actually just flipped to something else, which was much more exciting. So if everyone was just excited about Bitcoin and Dogecoin, now they got a serious contender. And just like every time people get too depressed, there's silver lining at the end of the cloud. And that's what happened with this industry, with our two small little building blocks. All of a sudden, pessimism turned into optimism. It was 2016, and people started to look into the world with more optimism and more hope. And that kind of coincides also with the time that corporations time started paying more attention. And a very popular saying at the time was that we're really excited about blockchain technology, but don't like Bitcoin. So um, I'm guessing how that worked for them. I think uh, we all know. But anyway, back to the innovation. The explosion of innovation followed and the new concepts started to be explored. Non-fungible tokens, decentralized autonomous organizations, ICOs and DEXs. All four of them blew up, fucked up, and uh, went wrong in very spectacular ways. But it didn't change the fact that the innovation was here and the genie was out of the bottle. And that the face of innovation was looked more like a crypto kitty compared to a guy in a suit. And like I said, there were scams, there were failures, there were fuck-ups, blow-ups, hacks, exploits, and everything. But the genie was out of the bottle one more time, and the hype was real yet again. Bitcoin hit 20K, Ethereum hit $1,000, everyone was ecstatic, people were quitting their jobs, some even took a dump on their boss's desk only to realize that they should, should have sold first, but it is what it is. Lesson learned, there was a two-year bear market, everything was washed out clean, just like it did a million times before, and now... After two years, in 2020, we have Corona and we have DeFi and the future of finance in front of us. So up until this point in time, I was only talking about the past. Now I want to talk about the future and because I'm really bad and have absolutely no idea where this is all going to go, I'm just going to say this, that throughout the scams and the failures and the blow-ups and the fuck-ups and the disasters, the ridicule hacks and the drama and the trauma and all the cynics, we nevertheless and somehow managed to build this amazing ecosystem that knows no borders, no boundaries, no limitations. We've built a parallel financial system that is truly egalitarian, inclusive, open, transparent, and built for everyone. And if this sounds like some hippie wet dream, it's actually also decentralized. It has a standard currency or gold or almost like a go native gold reserve currency, which is Bitcoin. It has a plethora of smart contract platforms. It has decentralized exchanges. It has decentralized land and borrow markets, decentralized capital formation being available, decentralized collectibles. And we're just getting started. And what I've just, you know, uh, mentioned 
are all the building blocks that somehow were built and came into existence in the last decade. And we're just getting started. And every day that goes by, this thing it just it grows bigger and better and more resilient and the less dependent on the legacy systems of the bankers and the central structures of authority that we saw in the beginning. In other words, Pharaoh will not be ass whipping uh, people too long anymore. So, final message is that we should all stop being cynical. We should all look and celebrate that there were fuck ups and blow ups and that we did a lot of stuff wrong. But through that, we learned a lot and we built a ton of cool shit. And if there's one thing that we all should be doing, I think, is to continue building cool shit. So that's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you.